These are the trigonometry lectures on educator.com and today we're going to learn about sine and cosine values of special angles. And when I say the special angles, there are certain angles that you really want to know by heart and those are the 45-45-90 triangle and the 30-60-90 triangle. So let me talk about the 45-45-90 triangle first. Um, I'll draw this in blue. So here's a 45-45-90 triangle. And I'm going to say that each side has length 1. And so if each, if each of the short sides has length 1, by the Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out that the long side, the hypotenuse, would have length square root of 2. I'm going to scale this triangle down a little bit now. I want to scale it down so that the hypotenuse has length 1. And so that means I have to divide all three sides by square root of 2. So if I scale this down, so that the hypotenuse has length 1, that means the shorter sides have length 1 over the square root of 2, because I divided each side by square root of 2. And then if you rationalize that the way you learned in your algebra class, multiply top and bottom by square root of 2, you get square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So that, those are very important values to remember because those are going to come up as sines and cosines of our 45 degree angles on the next slide. But first I'd like to look also at the 30-60-90 triangle. And I have to do a little bit of geometry to work this out for you. So I'm going to start with an equilateral triangle, a triangle where all three sides have 60 degrees. And I'm going to assume that each side has length 2. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to divide that triangle in half. So if we divide that triangle in half, then we get a right angle here, and each one of these pieces will have length 1. And so now if I just look at the right-hand triangle, remember that each one of the corners of the original triangle had, was 60 degrees, and so that means that this small corner is 30 degrees, and I have a right angle here. And now the short side has length 1, the long side has length 2, and I've got to figure out what the other side is uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. Let me call that x for now. I know that x squared plus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. So x is equal to 4 minus 1, or x squared is equal to 4 minus 1, which is 3. So x is the square root of 3. So that's where I got this relationship, 1 square root of 3, 2. There's the 1, there's the square root of 3, and there's the 2. Now I'm going to turn this triangle on its side, and I want to scale it down. So originally it was 1 square root of 3, 2. But again, I want to scale the triangle down so that the hypotenuse has length 1. To do that, I have to divide everything by 2. So the short side now has length 1 half, and the longer of the two short sides has length square root of 3 over 2. Remember, that's the side adjacent to the 30 degree angle, that's the side adjacent to the 60 degree angle, and that's the right hand side. So these two triangles are very key to remember in remembering all the sines and cosines. In fact, if you can remember these lengths of these two triangles, you can work out everything else just from these two triangles. So let me emphasize again, the 45-45-90 triangle, its sides have length 1, square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 2 over 2. The 30-60-90 triangle, 
have si has sides of length 1, 1 half, and root 3 over 2. So those are the values that you need to remember. If you can remember those, you can work out all the sines and cosines you need to know for every trigonometry class ever. So let's explore those a little bit. Um, we already figured out, let me draw a unit circle. We know that sines and cosines occur as the x and y coordinates of different angles. Well, if you're at 0, let me just draw in some key angles here. 0, here's 90, here's 45, here's 30, and here's 60. If you're at 0 degrees, which is the same as 0 radians, then the cosine and sine of the x and y coordinate are just 1 and 0. We already figured those out before. And the other easy one is the 90 degree angle up here. We figured out that that's pi over 2 radians, and the cosine and sine are 0 and 1 there. Now the new ones, let me start with 45, because I think that one's a little bit easier. So the 45 degree angle, there it is right there, and we want to figure out what the x and y coordinates are because those give us the sine and cosine. Well, we just figured out that a triangle that has 1 as its hypotenuse has square root of 2 over 2 as both its x and y sides. So that's where we get the square root of 2 over 2 as the cosine and sine of the 45 degree angle, also known as pi over 4 radians. For the 30 degree angle, I'll do this one in blue, the 30 degree angle, we have, again, hypotenuse has length 1. Remember, the length of the long side is root 3 over 2, and the length of the short side is 1 half. So that's how you know the sine and cosine of the 30 degree angle, or pi over 6. The cosine, the x coordinate, root 3 over 2, sine is 1 half. The 60 degree angle, that's just the same triangle, but it's flipped the other way, so that the long side is on the vertical part, and the short side is on the horizontal axis. So the short side is 1 half. The long side is now the y-axis, that's root 3 over 2. So that's how we get 1 half being the cosine of 60 degrees, root 3 over 2 being the sine of 60 degrees. So these values are really worth memorizing, but you remember, you figure it all out from those two triangles. All you need to know is that one triangle has length 1, has hypotenuse 1, and sides root 2 over 2. That's the 45-45-90 uh, triangle. And then the other triangle, has hypotenuse 1, and then the long side is root 3 over 2, short side is 1 half. That's the 30-60-90 triangle, and then you just take that triangle and you flip it whichever way you need to to get the angle that you're looking for. So these angles, uh, these sines and cosines are the key ones to remember. Root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1 half. From that, what you're going to do is figure out the sines and cosines of all the other angles all over the unit circle. So here's my unit circle. We figured out all the sines and cosines of all the angles in the first quadrant. All we have to do now is figure out all the sines and cosines of the angles in the other quadrant.